Jonathan Joseph with the pick six. Aaron is probably also the other guy that'll probably tell somebody else they music trash. Yeah. <laughs> Andre with the catch and the touchdown. Great grab, Andre Johnson. I miss the being around the guys. Like, I miss the plane rides, the bus rides. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Goat Talk. I'm Andre Johnson, and I'm sitting here with Jonathan Joseph. So, J. Joe, give me the story of how you got to Houston. Coming to Houston, I think it was 2011, the lockout season. I had a couple teams that uh, was interested. I uh, had a teammate that was actually a college teammate that was playing in Houston at the time, Fred Bennett, and had a wedding down in um, South Carolina. Which is Charleston, South Carolina, one of the hottest weddings I ever remember. <laughs> it was one o'clock out there, I sitting outside that sweating wedding. bullets. Yeah, I was at that wedding. And um, teams, I think, was Oakland Raiders, um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Detroit Lions. And me and you talked at the wedding. Really one of my first times actually meeting you, meeting you, other than playing against you on the field. And we went on about, you know, the situation in Houston, because Dante Robinson was here. He had just left. Yeah. And um, you already had told me pretty much. He was like, man, I want you to come to Houston. I want you to be there. I'm gonna let him know upstairs. And you know, sure enough, when free agency come around, Houston was the last team to reach out. Obviously, you had to get the financial part and everything taken care of, but just talking to you, having the conversation, knowing where you was at in your career, and just knowing that you needed other guys around you to help this team try to get over the hump. And that would pretty much led me to coming to Houston, you know, from us meeting at the way and talking and having that conversation. And just having the trust and the vision that, you know, you had for yourself in this team. All right, since we're on GOAT Talk, I got to ask you, is there a favorite city you like to travel to? Or is there a favorite city, or can I say, what's your favorite city to party in, party in or where you've had the most fun at? I talk about, you know, some of the times when you have a big win and we coming back on the plane. You know, I think um, for me, it was all about, you know, the card games. Right. But guys either whether play cards or whatever it may be. But it goes back to just being competitive and having a good time. He may be back here with the receivers. I may be up there with the linebackers right. or with the offensive line. You know, it didn't necessarily have to be me with the defensive backs or whatever. I think um, that was the best part about it because we were celebrating the win and we was a true team. But there ain't nothing like that playing ride off after a big win, man. Yeah. I think for me, probably one of the best ones was the first year we clinched the playoffs. Yeah. We was coming back from Cincinnati. And I think the thing what made it even better when we got back, how many fans was here. Like college. Yeah. It was like, like college. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. Like, but the plane ride after that game, that was probably one of the best ones. Like, I mean, everybody, like, I don't think nobody sat down the whole flight. Oh, man, nah, we had a good time. We had, a, <laughs> we had no idea that the fans was going to be like that right, when we got back. Right. We got back. Hundreds of fans, just hundreds, just lined up outside of it. Right. We looking like, what? Police escort? Everything. It just gave us a different feel, gave us the chills. Yeah. And it showed what that win meant for the city and, you know, what they've been craving and looking for. Yeah. So yeah. it made us feel good all the way around. You right. know, even though we, we geeked up. Right. Hell, we geeked. We geeked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that that probably was my favorite trip. But, I mean, anytime we were on the plane, and people always ask me, they'd be like, what do you miss most about the game of football? I always tell them I miss the being around the guys. Like, I miss the plane rides, the bus rides. You know, hanging, um, sitting, watching the college games in the hotels, you know, the night before the game on the road, uh, the locker room. Like, a lot of people don't even realize, like, I hung out with the DBs more than I probably hung out with the wide receivers. I used to always come sit by y'all lockers every day after practice. My GOAT, and I get the Tom Brady situation, like winning seven Super Bowls, but to me, and I don't know, maybe it could be biased because I grew up in Miami and I was a huge Dolphin fan growing up, but I feel like Dan Marino is the greatest quarterback. Oh, I do for 5,000 yards in the 80s. <laughs> in the seasons. No, I know, but uh, you never hear, to me, I never, when they mention the best quarterback of all time, I never hear his name coming. It's always Joe Montana. Uh, well, Tom Brady, Joe Montana, or like uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, right, right. or something like that. But I just, I got to have Dan the man. Like, I'm taking him all day long. Dan Marino, bad boy. He bad boy. 
be a bad boy. But I definitely can see. And like for me, I say my goal, like Deion Sanders is a layup for everybody, you know, at the cornerback position. But um, I'd probably say, and I don't really want to say Champ Bailey neither because they close right there. I would say like for me, it's actually was a guy from my neighborhood, Jeff Burris. Played with Indianapolis Colts and lost four Super Bowls with Buffalo on that run. But like for us, he was the biggest thing come out of there where I'm from. Right. You know, went to Notre Dame, All-American, everything. So for us, just seeing him, the way he went about his business, seeing him on TV, seeing him compete for us, I know he never was Hall of Fame with this and that, but he showed us the way and he paved the way for a lot of us back home. Right. So like for me, that was always just like he could do no wrong in my eyes. Like that was the guy. We all tried to be like him, you know. Like, Deion Sanders, we watching them, we got the name and all this and that, but back where we from, right. Jeff Burris, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Burris, you know what I mean? Now, so. I think we all, as a athletes, have somebody, or like you said, you have that guy from back home, me, Dan Marino. I think we all have that uh, person that we, I want to say look up to, but they had an impact on us in you know, like he probably had an impact on you playing defensive back. I would say uh, Chad Johnson, one guy I know that always was update the music. He was update on everything. Yeah. He would go to China and come back with all these watches and phones <laughs> and stuff that I'd never seen. Like, he was the first guy that actually, what's Christian Lewis, who? Louis Vuitton, right. he got 10 cases down there. I'm like, what's going on? What is this? The whole transition from the baggy clothes to the, you know, the fit right. clothes and stuff. And I still remember yesterday when he first played uh, the Rick Ross song, Every Day I'm Hustling. But he played like three weeks before it ever came out. Like, what is this? Right. Like, man, it's riding. What is this? And every time he would always try to be the guy to get the new music and update the music. So I say my guy was Chad Johnson. Yeah. So I would say, I would say Arian Foster. Arian Foster was, he was heavy in the music. Like, you know, he put out an album. And stuff, but Arian was like Bobby Fino. Yeah, <laughs> Arian used to listen to everything. But if it, it was, if it was a guy we had to put on the ox score, it would definitely be him. Arian is probably also the other guy that'll probably tell somebody else their music trash. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would definitely do that. <laughs> Touchdown! Great grab, Andre Johnson. 